Hey, Pratesh, Rakesh, I think this is only PM meeting. I don't think any of the technical teams are going to attend this call. Just an FYI. You can stay. Perfect. Thank you, Vani. Yeah, yeah. You can stay or you can drop your wish. Hello, Hello, David. Hey. Uh, uh, Kwani, uh, quickly, what is on the agenda? Today, I uh, know nothing much in the agenda because uh, we discussed yesterday. Don't Today hear was... anyone. Hey, David, can you hear? I can hear you, Vani. Yeah, so nothing hear, was David. much on the agenda. We were waiting for Toddy to let us know about the scenarios about verification. Okay. He actually, All right. he actually the plugging, uh, provided the that. Plugging. He did? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I saw a posting. I was reviewing it this morning. He posted it on Notary V2 channel. Uh, let me share the link here. I went to the actual story. No, which no, is... not that one. Sorry, I sent the wrong one. Hang on. The scenario for trust policy trust store. Yeah, I went to that story, but uh, I didn't have anything there. So I think I might have missed in Notary. Yeah, look at this one. I put the second link. Look at the second link. It came on the Notary V2. Oh, is that true? Okay. I think we shall uh, have um, so somebody else look at it as well, who is more involved with the uh, cl containers and clusters and how they work. Go, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so I was just I was just saying, um, I think I think his <laughs> I think he uh, I, I, I he should be joining this call. I'll ping him. But um, I mean, my gut is the intention here was to show a more complex use case um, yeah. to highlight to highlight the requirements at the end <laughs> right because um, doing these types of operations right manually copying paste in JSON is uh, it's not gonna work right um, so just for future kind of design and thinking how we try and figure this out right? <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, let me, uh, let me just ping Toddy and see, cause I did forward the meeting invite to him. So I don't know. Um, one of the items that I had was, uh, just the cozy spec, uh, PR. And if anybody has had a chance to, to look at that or not yet. David, uh, yes, Milind was looking into it. I'll, I'll ping you once I connect with Milind to, today. He was, uh, he was looking into the cozy spec. 
Okay. Um, I know we have a DCO issue now. Um, and, uh, and there's a merge conflict. I dealt with that mess a while back. Looks like I'm going to have to do it again, but I think regardless, don't let that hold you back from reviewing it because I don't think, I don't, I, I have to check, but I don't think the conflicts are very much at this point. And this is also another reason why I want to merge it because it's really painful for me or anybody to have to continue to rebase and re like mm -hmm. <laughs> fix all the merge conflicts anytime there's an update to anything. So um, yeah, it'd be great to, to get it merged in. Yeah, sure, sure, David. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I'll I'll ping you once I get I connect with Milan. Definitely, he was looking into it, so I do not have a latest update on okay. that. But I get okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. <clears throat> okay. So Toddy's here now. <laughs> Welcome, Toddy. Hey, Todd. Sorry for being late. No worries. Uh, so they they had on the docket um, your trust store trust policy scenarios um, to to talk about. So um, Samir and Vani, did you have um, some comments or questions or things you wanted to bring up regarding that? Um, sorry, I did. I kind of missed it on the Notary Vito channel. I was following up on the issue itself. And I didn't see anything, so I'll take a look at that as well. Samir. Yeah, Bani, I, I linked the uh, PR to the issue, so it should be linked to the issue. And I think I tagged uh, Samir there. Yeah, I'm, I have started reading it. I've not completed it, just kept getting pinged on different things. I think I'll, I'll also have somebody like Milan review it as well. Uh, he had thought about it at a deeper level, but I think some of the new scenarios you have mentioned, I know I was not thinking about them, like the multi-tenant services, that's something I wasn't thinking about from a use case perspective. So this is good information to have before we make any changes. Yeah, I don't think that we should do any changes immediately, right? So we yeah. can think about uh, Parsi too. Uh, let's, let's have a more thorough review on that and uh, uh, and I understand uh, I actually submitted the PR yesterday late in the afternoon, so I do not expect you guys to <laughs> read it overnight. So uh, take your time, but uh, yeah, let's catch you maybe in the next uh, community meeting uh, discussion about that and uh, have some, some plan going forward. Yeah, but, but I think Tony, from a so from a RC1 perspective, we are in agreement that, or, or are we in agreement that we'll have a method for people to attach a trust policy, however they generate manually or some other copy and paste into ratify or some other way, right? That's something we are still marching on. That is my understanding, yes. Okay. Yeah. I think I think the right the focus uh, is is kind of getting everything stable um, regarding the signature format. Um, so that's kind of the biggest thing I think, right? So that if people do decide they want to they want to use you know RC one to sign things, that um, we we're not changing that format of what the the signature. Uh, or whatever you have signed is going to change to where later it's not going to be able to be verified. I've kind of talked about this before in the past. The only thing that looks like it may be impacting uh, that is something that just came up around the OCI artifact side of things. Um, I know mean, it's not just came up, I and mean, we kind of roughly talked about it before, but um, practically that playing out, I guess, is going to also have a impact there in terms of what that what that looks like can you expand on that david like can you like I yeah. Don't yeah let me um i really wish uh this would have been posted in the not notation channel but i i think i will just i might just do that now um 
to do. Yesterday, he and I and Vani got talking about it as well. He was mentioning there is more than one fallback scenario required. And I was thinking there's just one fallback. So he did share a link yesterday with us. I read through the link. I couldn't figure out why there's more than one fallback scenario. But that's the only change I'm aware of, which could be disrupting plans. So I'm just curious if there's more information that you have. Yeah, I'm just trying to pull up the thread. I read it roughly. OK. <clears throat> there we go. Um, this is the notes from Shiwei uh, yesterday. David, are you sharing something or? No, not yet. I was just gonna. I was just gonna uh, copy and paste uh, basically Shiwei's notes from yesterday, at 10 p.m. on the meeting, um, which you were tagged last night as well, and you. I saw you responded at 6:18 a.m. Uh, for PR with the proposed updates, but I think it's worth um, bringing up uh, to the at least posting to the the Slack channel. Um, Unless you think otherwise. Uh, oh, that's, uh, yeah, uh, he said that he will create a PR with the proposal, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, so we should ask him actually to create the PR and then post it for a discussion. So that was my ask for him. I don't, it's overnight right now with them. So I think it's too late. Most probably we'll get something tomorrow. Uh, that was, I'm trying also to find the message kind of blanking out, right? I now. have it. I have it. I have it. Um, Okay, um, I just posted it to the Notary V2 channel. Uh, let me have a quick look. Yeah, let me read. I, I do want to talk about this. The topic is curious or close to my thought process right now. And uh, also, there is one thing that we discussed in the meeting for the, um, I think I saw that in, we spoke about the, Trust policy for RC1 documentation. And uh, was there any issue out there? That is the 438, is it? Right? Sorry, the what? Is that what the issue 438 is uh, that was created? Uh, yeah, there's one related to, yeah. So there is a, a work item, but I don't think it's been flushed out in terms of like what the, like, what needs to happen and the impact as much and, and which is what that that comment is on the note review too but yeah i think it would be good to link those together yeah um yeah. so let's see yeah so there's notation go and notation cli supporting oci reference type so um uh, and there's another one a proposal use the OCI descriptor as payload format. I don't know how this one relates. 
Oh, that's from a long time ago. <laughs> Are you uh, sharing the screen, David? No, no. Yeah, no. let me, okay. let me, uh, yeah. let me. I can do that. I'm trying to relate it somewhere, and I'm not able to find it. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay, you should you should see it. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Yep. So we have we have this one. The OCI reference types. And then we have another one, which is the CLI supporting mm. that. Mm. So the the thing is, is that this is just kind of like, hey, we should talk about this. Um, but the the actual impact here is, I'm not sure. Have we have we factored this in for RC one already into our timeline or no? This is the migration part of it, is it? Well, just actually, well, that's where there's the further details right on the Slack channel. Um, so we, the man, the signature manifest specs will be impacted by this. Let me, I can, they just tagged you there and I can also copy the link, paste it in the chat. But I, I mean, I just want to try, try and flush this out to make sure that we're, yeah, yeah. We're in sync I think with having this having this in or not with RC one because it does it does you know back to the goal of again stabilizing the the actual things that are signed. You know that's going to be yeah yeah. This I is going to impact that. The, yeah, correct. This is the migration one because you are seeing that uh, version four there. That story was in that version. So as soon as the that was completed, I think October thirty first and. Uh, after that, I don't think we have bumped up the dependency of our as group. All right, but it's not a simple, it, that's the thing is, yeah. it's not yeah. a single, just bump the version and you're good. Like, and that's what it's I'm calling, uh, you know, that was called out there from Shiwe in the, in those text, that text that's there. Um, we actually have to update the specs and do a little bit of work there to get that done. And I'm just in terms of- that's yeah. the three issues, right? He opened recently, like yesterday. I think um, three issues he opened. Let me tell you. Yeah, so this one's tagged RC2. Um, no, there are oh, that's three. a year ago. Yeah, that. I think these three, uh, David. The 202, oh, I didn't give you the link. Yeah, it's two two three three five one three six. Oh, are you getting from me right now? Oh yeah, you don't have the links. You just have the yeah. I know, right? I did that. God. I'm I, I'm giving you the link. These are the three things. Yeah, the one, yeah. So I have those two up there, the one three six, mm. three, three, five, but then the two or two is the other one that I didn't see. Yeah, two or two. That is the spec update for OCI yep. artifact. Yeah. Right. So is it is out of these Alta RC1? So I think um, yeah, they are part of RC1. Okay. So are we? Yeah. I mean, how how are we doing in terms of our release here with RC1 timeline? I think we we did not hear anything because um, 
we are on top of all the PR reviews on the refactoring itself. But this is something that came up just yesterday, right? The, th the three new stories. So we need to see if we are still 1128. I'm not sure about that, but uh, uh, the resending of the certificates and the other couple of stories, uh, we are on track for this week on the development side. Few stories on the RCVM. But okay. there are there is more to it, right? Like the documentation of all the, you know, the creation of trust or trust policy based on uh, getting it into the startup guide. All that we need to we need to align with how exactly it should outline as well. Or is there anything additional that is concerning, uh, David, for the timeline itself? Uh, well, I know, I mean, I know Yi has done a lot more in terms of the estimations, uh, and things, but I, right. I know you all have been trying to work together on this. And so I guess I'm just trying to see, I mean, it looks like most things here are assigned, uh, to our side of the house. Um, and right. so I guess I'm just wondering, you know, like, if there's other things that on your side you can you can come in either to help with docs because I think we've been carrying I think the load for all of the website stuff. Now if there's yeah is it... yeah sure we can definitely be part of it yeah yeah okay um, doesn't look like I think it looks like the only thing that's assigned that. So yeah, this is the desired RC1 release that's assigned to Fenman, but I think there's a bunch, three of, of, there's a bunch of work assigned. items that are inside of here. So it's kind of like if we could get if we can get some support for some of these other other things would be good. Okay. Okay. Because I think there's so like we have we have you know some docs uh, like Nate docs person helping us, but a, a number of these things, right, are actually article creations um, yeah. um, and, and walkthroughs and things, which takes some time. Somebody sure. to go through, we're not going to, sure. you know. Uh, can, can you send this separately? Where did you go? 77, is it? Uh, this is 30, uh, yeah, project dev 77. 77. Um, I get, I can uh, paste it here, but I think what we need is, oh, okay. I mean, so, I see. so you broke this, this down, which is good. Um, that was kind of my ask, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. But the problem is that this doesn't necessarily, I mean, we need to basically assign work items to these things. And right. so like there's work here, plenty of work Yeah. <laughs> for, our, true. for our C1, true. but true. we, you know, we need the links to then so that we could assign and, and fan out um, to have you help out with some of these things. Sure, sure. Is it something uh, how to guide is what we can focus on? Yeah, I mean, it looks like here, mm -hmm. I mean, this tutorials and the how to guides are, you know, like, I don't think, I don't know um, if, I mean, there's definitely plenty of room to contribute there. I don't, I, <laughs> I don't think anybody's started necessarily on these things, but um, sure. yeah, sure. I think the, you know, like this is something we, we should be able to divide divide and conquer, you know, um, and we really would like, uh, yeah, I, like I, some I, kind of cloud, cloud provider story. Cause we kind of have, we have a bunch of stuff for Azure, but I mean, we really would love to have the AWS kind of documentation or updates there too. Okay. Is that something you're planning to have? Uh, we, we were not. No, I was not planning about this. I was not looking into it for sure. It is not because it was assigned to Feynman and uh, there was uh, supposed to be further discussion from me on this. 
I can take a look at that. Uh, yeah, okay. well, because I, I mean, it's I think like, just in general, through, like you know? if you so, if you come yeah. to if you yeah. come to like the notary webpage and mm. and then all the public assets, like mm -hmm. um, un like it, it's not even though you know we're partnering on this pretty heavily together. Like it's unless you attend the community calls and or happen to know who's committing code and who which org they're from. <laughs> it, from a public or just come you know person coming in that there's not really obvious that this is a w aws is doing this or using this or either right so I, yeah. I think it would be good to you know have some form of presence there whether it's a blog or a walkthrough or a guide um like you, you know we have aws kms here like or or whatever else um you know you you have your you have a conference coming up soon right so sami yeah go ahead uh, did you have any questions no i was just uh, not on this i think this is good thing to have i was looking at the screen i was also looking trying to digest what David had shared earlier on the no tribute channel. No, I think no questions here. I think this is uh, good on how to lay it out and how to think about it. Refreshing per release will obviously be more tactical for some of these versus a complete refresh. We'll only make changes when needed, which I know I think this makes sense. Yeah, there will be a blog uh, 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 that different uh, companies may, may add and uh, I think uh, what I'm not sure about is if Notary V2 should link back to those blogs. I don't know if that's the right thing to do. I just don't know what the open source way of doing things are. Um, because then how will we determine um, whose blog to link to or whose blog not to link to? I'm just uh, I'm just wondering as to who is the judge of that. What right. Point that, back. Yeah, there's this it's blog here. <laughs> It's pretty light, right? Yeah. I, and so yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I'm almost it's, just thinking that if for an RC1, it would be nice to have an RC1 post. And then, you know, like if AWS has their, you know, your an own, their own blog with whatever you announced, um, linking to that there and linking to here's, here's how, you know, an end to end scenario for AWS, here's an end to end scenario with Azure you know, that kind of thing, right? So it's not that you would have to post the AWS blog here, but more of like, we should have probably an RC1 blog post um, and link to the various places of implementation, implementations, right? Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, so I think that there, there's a governance aspect there which has to be considered as to how do we approve something which goes in here because we are speaking a common language there, just like we came up with a governance on how to bring up a new signature format. There should be some governance in what Notary V2 announces. So the maintainers have to approve the blog at the at the least as an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, I think it's fine. I mean, if, if it's, if it's it, it, you know, I think it's just more of here's what Notary does and, you know, here's, Here's, you know, if you want to learn more on like a flavor of it with AWS or a flavor with Azure, then cool, go go yep. there. But but yep. not a like a <laughs> no no need to do competitive things or anything like that. Just more of like, hey, le learn more here. Um, and so that people realize this is just the I mean, just the fact that Microsoft and, and uh, Amazon are both, you know, working on this together that I think brings strength to the project as a whole, right? Okay. Okay. Tori has his hand up. Yeah, go ahead, Tori. Uh, yeah, in, in uh, this kind of uh, context of Vani and Sami, uh, I, I, we need to have the discussion about uh, a couple of areas uh, when we overhaul the whole notary site. Uh, so that's why we actually, I created two issues. One is for the information architecture for the site and another one is for the documentation uh, information architecture. So we would like to split those two. 
but on the overall kind of overhaul, there are a couple of questions that uh, we need to discuss. One is uh, exactly what you said, Sami. How do we actually make announcements? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. The expectation is uh, uh, that uh, there will be more uh, companies actually going coming to the project in the future, so we need to have some governance board for that. But the idea is that on the on the homepage to, for example, has uh, uh, scrolling news or something like this. So you don't need to, let's say, if you make announcement on AWS block, uh, you don't need to post it also here. But at least from this news scrolling. Um, uh, Carousel, we can actually point to that block. Uh, the mm -hmm. other thing that we've been discussing with Nate and, and uh, Vani, uh, I added you to this uh, documentation channel that Nate created, uh, okay. with Vlad Sami also. Uh, yeah. But we are also discussing the, the mailing lists, the uh, Twitter account there. So uh, we need to have kind of uh, uh, the mailing list for whoever will maintain the Twitter account needs to be from uh, uh, all parties involved. Uh, that will be us, uh, you guys, uh, uh, Docker, uh, and so on. And we need to have some some schedule. So we need to get into that mode that uh, we have uh, more a little bit more kind of diligence when we do the governance on, on those things. Uh, for two reasons. One is like, as you said, we don't want to actually post something that uh, is against of uh, your practices, but also uh, we need to make sure that actually we pop make the, the project popular so we get more engagement from a community. Agreed. So let's let's use those uh, uh, two issues uh, right now to to discuss kind of the overall ar uh, information architecture, and also use the channel to discuss the mailing lists and uh, the Twitter account and how we want to govern that uh, uh, for the future. Yep, that sounds good. Okay. Uh, I will add you, Sami, to the uh, docs channel. I don't think you're there. Yeah, Sami is not there. He needs to be added. Hey, uh, if you have time, I, I read through the uh, thing you posted and I've been looking at this fallback mechanisms uh, since yesterday as well, out of curiosity. Um, so if, if if you have a few minutes, David, I'll just like to yeah. pick, your brain, pick your brains to fully understand the problem here. The sure. fallback, Samir? <laughs> yeah, the fallback, yeah. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, if you want to just bring up that text that David just posted, we can just talk through it. So David, I am completely aligned. We were we were aligned that we will bring in the OCI reference spec work, which is currently in RC1, not formally released by OCI spec maintainers, into RC1 so that we can start using it. And uh, ORAS library supported the OCI spec, the reference API, and that brought that work should be brought into RC1. I'm aligned there. Where I started losing the alignment was the fallback option, why that is critical. And that's where I was curious about it yesterday. And I thought there's just one process to fall back, which was defined by using tags. But yesterday I figured there is, or he was pointing out there's more than one thing to consider. That's what one thing I want to understand. The second thing he said was, which I'm more curious about is, it's the responsibility of the client. And I'm thinking, why can't the library or the ORAS Go library just handle one or more fallback options inside it and keep any client which uses the ORAS Go library transparent to it. Those are the two questions I have still, which I still can't tease from your, uh, from your posting. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so the, the problem is, right, that that the, the format is different, right? Um, and the registries which support the 1.1 .1 spec is gonna be limited for a while, right? Yep. So, you know, I think the, that is the big challenge um, of how do, you, how do you handle that? Cause it's not a, just a strict one versus the other, right? Okay. Um, so that's what kind of the general fallback kind of mechanism refers to. Um, so in my simple mind, David, what I was thinking was, uh, because I don't know much about registries and that's why I'm gonna lean on you and Tadi on this one. 
So we were differing all the registry interaction work in the ORAS Go library. So what I was thinking at allowed him, and I'm thinking aloud here as well is, let the ORAS Go client or our piece which talks to the registry figure out, oh, is this registry 1.0 old, old base or the new 1.1 base, as like you said, and then it will just push and pull differently based on which registry type it is talking to. The rest of notation doesn't have to change. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice if as much as possible is handled by ORAS. I totally understand that. Um, <sighs> is that an easy explanation or is there a, or should I just wait for the PR from Yi and that? I would just, yeah, we can just wait for the PR from Yi okay, to, that's fine. to dig I mean, into it more and discuss. I just, I wanted to bring it up just because I, I wanted to, I, I wanted to know the status on, on your side because it looks like there are newer issues from the planning board and I didn't know if this was something you're aware of that we are having scope of this, that, that helps me to know that there's alignment and it's, and it's, it, there's a realization that it's not a simple, just bump the ORAS go version. Um, I don't, I, it doesn't sound like it's like many days of work. It sounds like from what I get gathered, it's like more of a day or two of work um, to implement this update. But the, the challenge is that this, the potential delays of, you know, spec approvals and that whole, you know, that whole thing, reviewing the PRs and such. Um, got it, got it. And then there was a mention of updating the signature spec in your in your note. You're referring to the signature spec of notary project, right? That's what you're referring to? Yeah, because, because the way that it, it attaches is going to be different based on this OCI spec, right? Whether you're using the... ORAS, you know, referrer type type thing, or you're using the OCI 1.1 spec, or you don't have that at all, um, is kind of the question, right? Yeah, no, that's, that's true. But that's what I was thinking that if you can abstract that out of the signature spec, I was reading the signature spec, uh, when, once I read your posting, I read through it, I said, there's no reason for the signature spec to be that precise that this is where you pull the um, pull the uh, signature type from. I'm just thinking about yeah. I think more experts have to look at it. Uh, I would love to keep notation and notary project independent of the way signature is stored in the registry as much yeah. as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let, let the discussions happen when the PR comes out then. Okay. Um, one other thing which I had that, um, and I know it's not in the RC1 scope right now, but I think it's pretty important to bring up um, that I think we need to, to really think about. It relates to not to the security response. So um, let, me, let me share out my screen again. And uh, let's see. So um, we, I, I did this just for notation and we talked about before this being uh, something that we'd probably wanna do for all the repos, the OpenSSF scorecard. Yep. Um, oh, the OpenSSF scorecard has a bunch of things, but one of the things I think is pretty important that we, we start to figure out is, is this, this one that's flagged, which is that there's no <clears throat> actual security incident policy um, for the for the repo, um, and for that matter, it's it's not on any of the notation code repos. Considering we're a security product, um, you know, having a security response mechanism, I think, is pretty important. And so, like, just to give you an example, the GoCozy one does have have this. Um, there's there's an actual security response policy uh, here. You can see um, it tells you, you know reporting a vulnerability, where do we send a report? Um, you know, how, how do we send the response? How is there disclosure, um, right? Because if there are people do find flaws in the security of the system, we need to have a way for people to report those things to us in a confidential manner, um, right? That you don't wanna just file an issue, oh, this is a security flaw and then 
somebody potentially can go exploit it, right? No, you understand? That, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a very good call out. So what so, needs to happen to bring some of these ideas from the openness of scorecard? Uh, Sami and David, uh, just one uh, side note here. So I've been uh, discussing with uh, Nate uh, the exactly the same kind of uh, question. Uh, one way is, uh, so we need to have a separate uh, mailing list for only security issues, which actually has a limited audience. That is the one way. However, uh, we learned that GitHub will make uh, some announcement uh, uh, for security notifications uh, that will be somehow built in, into GitHub. And uh, Nate and I decided to wait until that happens. So they supposedly will be announcing this on uh, today, tomorrow on the okay. GitHub universe. Uh, so uh, we need to have an issue to track this, but uh, uh, we, and we need to make up actually define the process uh, relatively soon as uh, david is saying so that's kind of uh urgent issue uh but the minimum that we need to have is if there is no built-in github mechanism to do that for the project maintainers uh, then we need to have a, a mailing list uh, for the people now the problem that actually we may um Faces so if if the uh, currently the maintainers list is actually from people from um, uh, Docker, Microsoft, AWS, and NYU, which uh, uh, except uh, uh, Nias and and Steve, uh, the rest of the folks are kind of not very actively involved, and uh, we need to kind of think uh, if this goes to them, how we can handle this um uh, security notifications so uh maybe next week we can bring this up again uh i may have a proposal by next week how we can handle that and uh, uh we can revisit it again does that make sense yes yes yeah i think so there are two interrelated issues the one is the security policy as part of open ssf the other is uh making sure we have maintainers who can jump in when such an issue happens yeah exactly okay yeah and i think that's more important than doing the, the i don't know about more important but it, it's it's a, a certainly um an important foundation even if we don't do the threat testing at rc1 which we agreed to post i mean at least if you have a security incident response you you have a mechanism for things to get reported um yeah. you know so yeah. no no this is a good call out anything else in the open ssf so it's david like like vani and i came in as crypto experts on this project and there are aspects of open source management and registries that we are not experts in so we lean heavily on uh, you and steve in the past and now toddy so yeah please guide us through this i think this makes complete sense about the uh, about handling any of the critical open SSF scorecard vulnerabilities. Yeah, I do think, I mean, yeah. I do think, I mean, the token permissions and the pen dependencies thing, even though there's a bunch of those, um, that that should be a really quick and easy to fix. Uh, they're just really just find the versions and update the, the, the YAML GitHub action workflow files. So I think that would increase our score pretty significantly for a half a day of work, maybe. Um, <laughs> you know, from somebody and then the fuzzing stuff. The other thing I'll, I'll call out is when I went to KubeCon, there was a, a CNCF fuzzing desk, like, like booth, right? And one of the things they told me was that there is a, a, like people that will, like CNCF people will, that can help like implement the fuzzing for your project. Cause that's part of their goal, I guess, is to do that. Um, I did file an issue, or sorry, post an, a, a message on the security channel for Cloud Native Slack uh, on Tuesday. However, no one's responded to it yet. Um, the person at the booth was supposed to send me a link, and they never did. Apparently, you have to just file some issue, and that then triggers CNCF to, you know, get somebody and to 
invest some time into your project and considering this is a security project that's incubating um i think you know it's he, he was saying like yeah you shouldn't have any problem to, to have somebody help but it's just the next step of finding where that place is to file the issue and i i wish i would have uh got it directly but yeah um but that one would that one would help and this one's not as important i think you know it's not like we have to have it for rc1 but i just well it's top of mind since since it's here I just thought I would call that out because fuzzing is not a, it, it's definitely not as simple. Just check the box and you know, you're done. Like it's, it's a little more involved to get that one implemented. Well, uh, yeah, I think this would be a good benefit. And I agree with your prioritization about this. Let's, let's start the lead time. To, it could have a long lead time. So I appreciate your proactive approach here. And mm -hmm. yeah, makes sense. Hey, on the RC1, we're discussing on the RC1, right? I just wanted to, I was looking at a release definition for RC1, uh, which are for or for our definitions for beta alpha yesterday as well. Uh, I think we are holding the line then making sure beyond RC1, there are no breaking changes. The release definition exactly doesn't call it out, but it's implied in there. I just wanted to make sure we are aligned on that, that RC1, beyond RC1, we don't want any breaking changes on user experience to people. We can enhance well, the so I think that, yeah, I mean, I think we need to be clear on that. I mean, I, I think we should agree to no breaking changes for the signature format. Um, you know, again, the date, the thing that you sign shouldn't change, but in terms of the user experience, it's going to change. Um, the, the, the APIs, they might change. Um, I think that's okay. <laughs> I think that's an okay trade-off. Let's um, talk about that. I think, yeah. is there a proposal you have? Because to me, I think I was clubbing it all together that we will not deprecate a user experience. We can add a new user experience, but we won't deprecate one or change an existing one is the line I am holding. Uh, yeah, I think that I think that comes back to, yeah, like we said on which, which parts are available and which parts aren't um, in the, in the, like, let's say the CLI, right? And I, right. I'd have to like, uh, if there was an issue that <laughs> e filed a while back on that, um, I would have to like try and dig that up. But on which which aspects we're going to support, like I, I remember we said like cache isn't in and things like that. So I think that for the for the key ones, I, I think that's that's fair um, to say on the client experience. I think for for the other ones, right, the ones that aren't the sub commands that aren't GA, so to speak or RC, then then those will change or could be deprecated, right? Um, I'd have to like, let's see if we can pull this, find this one. Um, yeah, because people will write blog post on it. People will, this will go in documentation somewhere. People will put it in script somewhere. So deprecating right. is, is, is hard, changing is right. hard. Right. But adding a new right. one saying, oh, you got a newer, simpler way to do things by all, by all means. Right, yeah, and I think that uh, yeah, it's. Um, I think it was actually a discussion. Um, do do we think that we know that the user experience changes? No, right. We don't have any outstanding items that would outline that, right? I've not heard, so I'm just. This is a question. Yeah, no, I think I think we're fine, but I just I I want to pull up that document where where we have which which features are are in scope for we're maintaining which ones we aren't right because we we did have that just that dialogue a while back on yeah yeah um, we, which which ones is you yeah. know the experimental uh, versus whatever let's see uh, yeah here it is right here. This is the one I actually brought up, uh, July, right? And then, um, and then, and then I remember you did create an actual breakdown of here's all the commands we have, and here's the ones that we want to have as supported, and which ones we don't. I'm just trying to see if we can find. Uh, I think. Where, yeah, that's. Be I think weekly bill. We agreed. If you go back to that one, I see some. If you scroll up, I think you had four ideas. Scroll up. I think there were yeah. four ideas discussed. I was right. Uh, yeah. So yeah. 
the this was the yeah so i don't think we've we've taken the approach to disable the code the ux the code options right um but i don't think we've also put in the this is preview kind of <laughs> command into the cli right which i think is important um for that yeah it so like close the discussion on this one it's still an open item uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, feature flag. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, so see how, yeah, let's see Finman said preview, right? Um, for ORAS Discover. You said you like the ideas, but then. No, I said I like two and three above. I didn't like three. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we need to tie these back together with. The other ones that are there, because I know I remember there was a doc that we broke that you broke. It was a hack MD doc that was broken down um, for. Yeah, the different CLA commands. The different, yeah, like which ones, uh, which ones we said we wanted, which ones we said we didn't, and then I know there's also I think there's an item for in enabling the preview, like flags and stuff, right? Um, There we go, right there. Yeah, and it's it's currently under discuss. Yeah, let's keep it there. I think it will require more deliberation on this one before we just slide it into RC1. Well, right, but that's that's back to your point. I mean, <laughs> what's supported? I mean, this this gets into that point that point, right? Like if 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 we're leaving, let's say the notation cache command in, and you want to have the same user experience, and we decide that we don't want that anymore, or we're going to change it significantly, then it that's broken. And so, <laughs> yeah, no, that part, yeah. I, no, no, that part I get. That's why I think we have to be very clear in the release notes, saying, hey, only these commands are supported. Any other command which may have be there people should not take a dependency on that. I think that we will, so the process we can use is until we have this fully fleshed out with actual code changes is, we will only document the commands which we are willing to support without any breaking changes into the future. Any other command which is in there should be considered ex experimental or, or not supported, right? I think we should be clear in that in our release notes. <laughs> We should not say which subcommands. That's the way. That's that. That's the proposal uh, I have. Like I'm saying, uh, we have to be. We we can use the release commands as a mechanism to say, hey, community, and RC one. Here's the experience which we are supporting, and we will not break going forward. And I think we can just leave it at that. We don't have to. I say think it's. I think that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I. I <laughs> that's fine. But I think that that helps hopefully us be aligned in terms of what's what's backwards compatible and what's not from this, the notation CLI standpoint. From, from the API standpoint. Um, APIs I, can't change, right? APIs can't yeah, change. Yeah, okay. Take dependency okay. on it. We can add a new API by all means. Right, but yeah. Changing API yeah. Is, is a no. And I think you also talked about that, hey, we, sh we should not change the signature format at all. I think we spent a lot of time <laughs> on debating the signature. Right, yeah. right, yep. Yeah, because we want the other open source projects to consume this um, and not worry about things changing. Yep, no, I think we're aligned then. I think we're good then. I think we're good there. So it's basically, yeah, the signature, the format itself is what we need to try and lock down the APIs are gonna likely change and that's okay because people can, developers and people can pin versions. So that's that's fine. No, um, hang on, the, the APIs can be enhanced. They will, the existing APIs will not change, right? Let's be clear on that. You can add a new API to give, to give a new experience, but existing API is changing. I'm not sure that's a good idea because then it will ripple effect into other dependent projects. That's why we're doing this refactoring yeah. now, right? We don't right, want to... right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, we don't, we want to, we don't want any huge changes. Um, I think minor changes that's to be expected, but major, major ones, that's a different story. Um, not, not with the input and output arguments itself, but basically some minor implementation only on the functionality. Like, like for example, you were only returning three error codes. Now you return the fourth exactly. error code. I yeah, probably exactly. can see that may be a, a acceptable change. That success is. It, if only if it is optional, right? You should yeah. not make it yeah. mandatory. Mandatory. Because yeah, I mean, if you follow, I mean, if you follow Simver, I mean, that that should help a lot. But I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, the refactoring and all the work we've been doing to basically delay the RC1 is because we're trying to get it so that it ideally is pretty solid. And that's also why we have the OCI stuff coming up as well, right? Correct. So I'm, I mean, I'm with you in general. I just, what I just don't want is this to over index on worrying so much about about that right now um you do what you can but software is software right you find bugs you find things down the road that you just didn't think of and you have yeah. to do what you have to do you know yeah that will you're right that will be a similar change yes i will i will see that yeah then you could get into supporting multiple release branches until yeah mm -hmm. we are three minutes for the time is there anything else to be added yeah So uh, must be discussed. Yeah, Vani um, and Sami, uh, I would like uh, to start this discussion about the websites. Uh, I posted the the issues uh, on the Slack channel, so please take your time to to review those and add any comments. But maybe if next week, if we can come up to some agreement on the higher information ar architecture and then start filing items for individual content, that will be good. Yep. Sure. And, yeah. But uh, Terry, like we want all, almost all of these those changes come before RC one. But even if some of them slip out of RC one, you're not thinking them as a blocker for RC one, or are you? No, I don't think that the changes will come before RC one. So for RC one, what I, uh, I think we can achieve is just to improve the maybe the installation configuration. How do you? Uh, the installation documentation how do you configure a trust store and eventually how do you sign yeah. with uh, some keys so that's the maximum that i think we can make for rc1 those are not blockers for rc1 no okay thanks sure that's good to know <laughs> thank you samir for clearing me okay Okay, and uh, uh, David, I have two things uh, to do uh, based on, sorry, based on what we spoke. So, um, that is about COSE update. I will send you the update on that. And then looking into that issue number 77, the breakdown on the tutorials as well as the other items, we can yeah. go through and we can see how to accomplish that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it just probably it'd be good to just put, go into the docs channel and just say, hey, like, mm -hmm. you know, here's here's things out of the list that we think we can assign some resources to on, on our side to help with. Okay, sure. Okay, sounds good. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Nick.